Hello, my name is Alejandro López Martínez and welcome to the presentation about gamified smart objects for museums. This presentation has been structured as follows. First, in the introductory part, an overview of the design system is given together with the motivation to come up with this proposal. Then, in the background section, other projects addressing or using similar technologies and ideas will be reviewed. After that, the question generation methodology will be addressed. Next, the architecture of the design system will be explained. After having explored the methodology and architecture, an implementation of a prototype of the proposed platform in a real-life scenario is described. Finally, the conclusions drawn from this project will be outlined, as well as future lines of work. The first three questions that must be addressed in order to understand the significance of the project are First, what is being proposed? The system is a gamification platform to enhance visitors' museum experience. Second, how is this going to be achieved? By using smart objects and displaying a digital version of exhibits with their documentation via app. More importantly, a quiz game is offered based on automatically generated questions. Third, why would museums want to implement this system? Because it aims to improve visitors' knowledge acquisition process. Another goal is to engage and encourage visitors to interact with exhibits. Also, the automatic nature of the question generation process means that museum owners can benefit from reduced maintenance times of this platform. So, there are four main reasons that motivated and encouraged us to design and develop this platform. One of them is the importance to preserve cultural heritage, because museums have become the cultural soul and conscience of nations. Another reason is that emerging Internet of Things technology offers new ways to interact with this place of cultural heritage. Also, the use of smartphones in museums opens doors to different forms of tailoring museum experiences, for example by providing advanced visualization of exhibits or using games and gamification techniques to pique visitors' interest. The fourth reason is tied to the idea of using games and gamification techniques in museums that have just been mentioned. Quiz games are typical examples in this area and it would be very interesting to be able to generate these questions automatically, since this has not yet been contemplated in gamified museum environments. We will now move on to the background section. Since the automatic question generation schemes rely on exploiting linked data, it is important to grasp the idea of what it means. One of his publications, Berners-Lee defines it as data published on the web in such a way that it is machine-readable, its meaning is explicitly defined and it is linked to other external datasets. Also, it is important to note that its quality of being machine-readable implies linked data can be used in automation procedures. This can be achieved because linked data is structured according to some conventions. For example, terms known as ontologies are used to help classify and describe concepts and relationships. These relationships can also link to other datasets. With respect to linked datasets, Wikipedia, for example, has a semantic version called DBpedia, which is the knowledge base used in the system. To be more specific, questions will be automatically produced by extracting data from DBpedia and mining text descriptions about exhibits through entity linking tools. This entity linking process consists of two stages. The first stage is to identify words of interest and classify them into predefined categories, for example, persons or places. This process is known as named entity recognition. Afterwards, the words of interest that have been classified in this previous stage are now mapped to the corresponding entity in the knowledge base in a process known as named entity disambiguation. An example of an entity linking procedure is given where the adjective American has been identified and linked to the DVPD entry about the United States. Note the way United States is described, using ontologies to structure its description, GeoLat or DBO, population total, for example. There is considerable research on methods to exploit linked datasets to automatically generate questions, often resulting in some type of quiz-based game. Some of these examples include, who knows, Lower Quiz or Link Data Movie Quiz. Link Data Movie Quiz offers an online multiple choice quiz consisting of questions about cinematography. The creation of their game aims to assess the viability of automated question and answer systems in educational context. Clover Quiz is a multiplayer turbo quiz game for Android that automates the generation of multiple choice questions using templates to extract knowledge from DBpedia. Who Knows is another quiz game which aims to provide an appealing form of ranking DBpedia properties according to the relevance in describing a given entity. With respect to bodies of research that focus on harnessing linked data in cultural heritage environments, we can highlight three projects. One of them is an app that has been designed to offer personalized museum tours. This is achieved by displaying information about exhibits, which is enriched through live queries to external linked datasets. Another example is a tour wizard, which is similar to the personalized uh, museum tours proposal, but additionally, visitors can choose which artworks to include in their tour. 
The other example is a virtual 3D museum that involves semantic web and game engine technologies, where visitors can customize virtual three-dimensional exhibitions. Regarding the implementation of gamification strategies in museums, they tend to be a some type of game app. For example, in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, there is an app that visitors can download for free and they have to answer questions or solve puzzles about some of the exhibits. In the British Museum, a scavenger hunt up game is offered where visitors have to walk around the museum searching for the required exhibits and answering questions about them. Finally, to conclude with the background section, we will quickly review the use of smart objects in museums by providing four examples of their application. The SmartWorks platform benefits from the use of Bluetooth beacon devices installed throughout the museum. When visitors come close to one of these beacons, multimedia content related to nearby artworks is displayed in their smartphones. The talking art show system is similar. It also uses beacons, but when artworks are displayed on user smartphones, they begin to talk about themselves as well as recommend other exhibits. Another example is shown by an object called the loop. This magnifying glass reveals different layers of digital content when visitors point it toward exhibits that have been augmented. The last example can be seen in the Atlantic Wall exhibition of the Museon in The Hague, Netherlands. There are three-dimensional printed replica replicas of the original objects that visitors can place on display cases to play multimedia content related to the given exhibit. Next, we will describe the methodology followed in order to achieve the automatic generation of questions. The diagram show portrays the different stages to produce and display questions. First, information of museum items is processed in the natural language processing and semantic analysis phase, which outputs an enriched version of them. This is then fed to the semantic quiz generation stage, which will produce a trivia quiz question set. In the following slides, we will explain the two stages that bring about the creation of questions in an automatic manner. The NLP and semantic analysis stage consists of two parallel processes. Process A, which performs entity linking and entity categorization procedures, and process B, that performs an entity search and extracts topics of that entity from its corresponding DBpedia record. These processes are going to be clarified with an illustrative example, the renowned artwork Las Meninas by the Spanish painter Diego Velázquez. In process A, first, the textual description of the exhibit is analyzed with an entity linking tool. A phrase from Las Meninas documentation from Prado Museum's online collection is used to illustrate this. We can see that the term Philip IV has been recognized as Philip IV of Spain, and it has been linked to its corresponding DBpedia entry. Afterwards, entities are classified conforming to the category they represent. Different ontology terms are used to describe diverse properties of entities according to their type. Thus, this categorization procedure is primordial because only this way can one appropriately query for details of given resources on DVpedia using the right ontology terms and hence ask appropriate questions. Taking up the mentioned example, the entity Philip IV will be classified as a person, concretely royalty. Therefore, potential questions that spring to mind could be, when did Philip IV reign? Or who is the successor of Philip IV? Now, process B approaches differently the extraction of supplementary data related to a given museum item. The objective here is to directly resort to DBpedia to query for relevant data that cannot be obtained in process A. Particularly interesting results considering here the topics DBpedia encompasses entities in. The result of the entity search procedure shows, for example, that some of the topics that Las Meninas has been classified into are paintings by Diego Velázquez, Velázquez portraits of Philip IV, and portraits of monarchs. Therefore, querying about this topic can yield, for example, other works portraying royalty, and hence one could prepare questions based on these results, such as which of these paintings also portray royalty, or of the following paintings by Velázquez, which one also portrays Philip IV. So, data extracted from both processes A and B complement the exhibit's documentation, forming the rich version of museum items. The semantic quiz generation stage is actually the one in charge of generating questions. All of the questions are multiple choice and these will be produced through question templates. These contain three main elements. One, the question to formulate. Two, the category, if any, into which the question has been classified. And three, a parameterized query to DBpedia. These templates, together with enriched museum data, are fed into the automated question generator. Such generator consists in a procedure that evaluates the annotated data obtained about a museum item against the templates that comply with the specified criteria. This means the question category or subject matches the topics of at least one of the pieces of annotated data. Then, 
The query is executed to retrieve, first, the correct answer to the question, and second, a list of randomly selected plausible yet incorrect alternatives from a set of elements similar to the answer. These alternatives can be sorted out into three different lists according to their difficulty, easy, medium, or hard. The difficulty score is computed through entity similarity tools. The continuation of last minute as example in this stage illustrates a simple possible question template compatible with the entity Philip IV mentioned before. Step 2 shows the structure of a question template and step 3 shows the extract of an output object that contains the reached museum item together with a list of questions, their answers and different alternatives. We now move on to describing the architecture of the proposed platform. Taking into account the question generation methodology previously described, the resulting architecture consists of the following three main components. A data extractor and an annotator, a web service and a gaming system. The data extractor and annotator performs two major tasks. First, this module aims to retrieve museum objects documentation from their website using web scraping technologies. Second, the extracted data undergoes a semantic annotation procedure and questions are automatically generated as described in the methodology. The web service stores the information on museum items and their respective generated questions. Additionally, user data and game statistics are also stored. The implementation of the web server has been carried out considering REST API paradigms and it grants the gaming system access to the required resources. This is objects data, questions and user stats. Regarding the gaming system, it consists of two main artifacts, QR codes and a smartphone app. These codes contain an URL identifying the museum item of interest. These codes allow to access the digital version of the exhibit with its documentation, as well as access to the trivia quiz game. To continue, we will elaborate on the implementation of the proposed system in a real-life scenario. A prototype of the platform is being implemented at Joaquín Serna Telecommunications Museum at the Universidad Politécnica de Madrid in Spain. The platform has been adapted to present information and questions in Spanish. Additionally, QR codes have been printed into cardboard sheets. There are eight QR codes per cardboard, each of them complemented with an image of the exhibit and its name. A total of 883 exhibits have been integrated. The choice of format aims to encourage visitors interested in learning more about any museum object to take any of these cardboards and walk around the museum looking for the exhibits shown in them, thus shifting the visit more towards a treasure hunt experience. Also, the app has been adapted to the telecommunications museum. This will be better appreciated in the demo video that we will shortly show. It is also worth mentioning some of the problems that have arisen during the implementation of the prototype in the Telecommunications Museum. One of them is that the quality of data in Wikipedia regarding telecommunications and related fields is not good. For example, the corresponding Wikipedia entry about voltmeters does not describe the different types of voltmeters, nor the physical quantity that is being measured. Another problem is that the available documentation on exhibits is sometimes insufficient to extract relevant data. This means that the ability to produce specific questions about an object is hindered. As a possible solution, we decided to classify museum items into four categories. Sound and image, telephony, radio and telegraphy, and instrumentation. This classification allows us to prepare questions based on the theme objects belong to, and a total of 1,013 questions have been initially produced. We will now show a demo video of the platform.
To sum up the presentation, we will encapsulate the main ideas conveyed. A smart object gamification platform for museums has been introduced, which is based on Internet of Things and semantic web technologies. Questions for the quiz game are automatically generated based on a set of templates. Visitors can interact with the platform through QR codes and the smartphone app. This app offers advanced visualization and access to play questions. We have also addressed the implementation of a prototype in a telecommunications museum. During the adaptation of the platform to the telecom museum, we have identified the Wikipedia data quality issues with the telecommunications topics, which has reduced the number of possible questions that could be produced. The prototype, however, still needs to be validated. Therefore, future work will focus on carrying out an evaluation procedure based on a partial least squares models to assess the usefulness of the proposed approach. Thank you very much for your attention.